So we've traveled all the way to Utah to Storm Products where they manufacture bowling balls. And we've got Steve Klepkin here from Storm. Come on in, Steve. And we are gonna give you guys a behind the scenes tour of what goes on here at Storm. You guys do a lot of stuff here, right? A lot of stuff, a lot of bowling balls come out of this plant. Yeah, so we're gonna, you're gonna walk us through? Yeah. Show us some things maybe we can see, yeah. but also a lot of stuff that's gonna be really cool. I'll do my best to show you everything that I can show you, but there's a lot of good stuff in here, and I think you're gonna be amazed at all the different steps that go into making a bowling ball. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that happens inside here that the average consumer never even thinks about. Yeah, so let's get started. We're gonna head into the building right now. All right, Lucas, well, this is the start of it all. We have, uh, when you're looking at a bowling ball, the start of a bowling ball comes at the very center. So we make weight blocks. That's the heaviest, densest material that goes on the inside of the bowling ball. This is an area we can't go in, but Steve's gonna show us a little bit behind the scenes of what's on the inside. Well, for example, this is, you know, one of the most popular bowling balls that we have of all time is the high road. These are two of the key components of the weight block that go into actually making the high road. So when you're looking at these, go ahead and feel these. Kind of check out, you'll see this is a lot heavier than yeah. that. And basically you're looking at a similar material. If you look at the difference in the volume, look at how much more material there is in your left hand than there is in your right. But these are the two key components of our inverted FE2 technology weight block that creates the dynamics and why you get that shape and motion. Part of why you get the shape and motion, the cover stock is still number one. But as far as the dynamics of the core, all starts right here with these inner components of the weight block. So it's like this is the very center of the bowling ball, right? It's Absolutely. In the middle. It's like the center of the earth. Like this is where it, it, the process all begins with these little pieces. That's right. Okay, then we'll come over here. All right, so uh, you guys make bowling balls right here because this looks like soccer balls or volleyballs to me. It right? does. It, it absolutely does. Balls, yeah. no? And one of the things when we're looking at these pieces and parts right here, this part right here, this is what we refer to as the core of the bowling ball. So you actually can't see what's inside this thing right now. But what you can see right here is there's actually a hole that we drill. This is the actual hole, the center of the weight block that goes inside of here. This is how we suspend or place that those two different pieces I just showed you on the weight block would go inside of here or the different heavy shapes that go inside of here. It doesn't matter exactly what it is, but in order to get the dynamics that we're looking for, we have a very dense material inside and then a very lightweight material on the outside. So what it does, as far as dynamics goes, is it lowers the center of gravity. Ultimately, it gives the bowler more hook because we put this lightweight material around a very dense inner core, inner weight block, I should say. So the two pieces you just showed us, that's what is in here, those, those types of pieces. The two pieces that I showed you are examples of exactly what you would see inside of here. Now you do have two different designs, keep in mind. One's a weight block, which is a high road that I showed you before. Others are designs that are called core balls. And this is a design that has a core, so it has a center shell, but that's how you get the low center of gravity. And that's how you get the low RG design that creates more hook and more ball motion. in our urethane area. So all of the tanks behind you, these are different tanks that actually host different materials. So when you're seeing us pour a three color ball, if you look at the gentleman sitting down over here, you can see there's actually six hoses coming down. So you've got two white colors, two black, and two copper. So these are different colors that are going into one of our new releases that's gonna have three different colors on the bowling ball. So in this pour station, he's actually taking that nozzle with that material that's flowing through there, that's the cover stock material, and he's filling up that core material, and all that core that I showed you before, that material is flowing around it, fills up the mold, then he taps it, and then he moves on to the next one. Once the table goes around and it's cured up just enough, it gets placed on this cart or this tray right here that gets that scoots down, and it, if you put your hand over the top of that, you'll be able to feel that it gets quite hot quite fast. There's a reaction period where it actually takes, and that material itself creates a lot of heat. So it starts out as a liquid, but that chemical reaction is what turns it into a solid. And that happens in a matter of just minutes. This, this is where the cover stock of the bowling ball is actually poured. All the colors and additives and fragrance. A lot of people love Storm because there's fragrance that's added to the bowling ball. And it's really kind of a unique thing. That's one of the things that comes 
uh, with a strong bowling ball, this, and if people ask all the time, how long is the fragrance going to last in my bowling ball? And the answer is we have not found a time where it do does not continue to go throughout the life of that bowling ball. We started pouring them about 18 years ago, 19 years ago now with fragrance, and we haven't had a bowling ball that's lost its fragrance because it's infused in the cover stock material, so that's actually part of the shell itself. So, so do we know what the fragrance of this one is? Uh, this one right now? We yeah. might be able can to smell it. You can definitely let me, smell it. Let me smell it. Yep. Uh, I think it smells like cinnamon. Yep. Yeah, oh, I get the yes. And we get the confirmation. <laughs> cinnamon smell. We got cinnamon fragrance. <laughs> That's a nice one. Yeah, red hot cinnamon. So when you look at this, for example, these are the bowling balls that actually come out of the mold that we just poured over there. You can see there a little bit of a seam, a little bit of a knob. So how's this ball going to roll, Lucas, if it goes down yeah, the lane like it is? very good. It's supposed to be round. What's it's a, going on? It's supposed to be round. That's because we haven't gotten quite to the next two steps yet. There's two steps that are going to be coming. The first step is we have to actually pour the pin material in there. So the part that shows you where the center of that weight block is that we had before, we'll actually take material, we'll fill that in, and we'll actually create the pin that you see on the surface of the bowling ball. That's how ball drillers actually determine what that right layout is and position for every bowler to determine those proper layouts and it affects how the roll. Yeah, so obviously there's a lot more to the process than, than this. So they, they then, from this step, where do they go to uh, try to make them usable? All right, so our next step, our next step that we're at now, we've actually had to jump ahead a day because when we actually pour the bowling balls, as I mentioned before, a lot of heat is generated as the material cures. Well, we want to make sure that bowling ball fully cures before we cut it down and make it. Remember what we said before about that bowling ball, it's got a seam and an end on it. That's not going to roll very good. We have to make it round. So this is what we have right here is a machine that's called a lathe. It actually spins the ball very fast. There's a blade that rotates around. It will actually cut it down to size. So we've got a perfectly round bowling ball now after this process. So where does it go from here? I see there's a few different pieces of machinery. Yeah, we've got three different pieces here, Lucas. The one in the middle is where it starts, which is a, just a generic scale. It's accurate to a hundredth of a pound. But we'll put that on there so we know what the gross weight of the bowling ball is. And then when it goes over to the left, you can see this device right here. This is a flow and it puts a layer of air around that bowling ball. And then basically, the just science will dictate exactly where that center of gravity is. The heaviest part of the bowling ball will actually drop to the bottom. And then when you'll see him, when he hits it with his hand, this actually forces a needle up from the bottom. And that's actually where the center of gravity is. That mark that you see on the outside of the bowling ball comes from this process. And then lastly, this device right here is how we determine exactly where our preferred spin axis is based off of the ball being an asymmetrical bowling ball. So if it's a Rotogrip HP4 or a Storm Premier Line ball, it's gonna have an asymmetrical weight block. So we put it on this machine right here to spin it real fast and it orientates itself in a way that determines where that high radius and gyration axis is and it marks that. And then that's where our preferred spin axis marking is on the surface of the bowling ball. That all happens right here on this table. So now we know the weight of the bowling ball. So that, that determines the next stage for the bowling ball, right? It, right? it looks like there's different areas here where it gets played. That's right. We've got these four different tracks or rails and this takes us around to the finishing area. So once it goes from here, it comes onto our rack here, goes to the finishing area where we apply the proper surface to the bowling ball and we'll actually end up putting the logos on the bowling ball as well at the next stage. So our bowling balls have been cut down to size. We know the weight. We know exactly where the center of gravity is. We know where their preferred spin axis is. So now it comes around, we have to determine exactly what surface we want in the bowling ball. So we have a machine right here, which is a very large ball polisher. This has all kinds of different compounds and uh, materials we apply to the surface of the ball. It's adjusted and buffed in just right so we get it if it's a polished finish. And we also have many balls that we have that have a sanded finish. There's a machine we have that's called a surface factory machine. And it does the dirty work for a pro shop, basically. So you don't have to sit on a ball spinner by hand and adjust the surface. So we actually have these machines that are set up in here. They will actually change the pad that goes underneath it, and it uses gravity to apply the exact same amount of force on each of the bowling balls so we have a consistent finish. 
So once we have the surface prepared on the bowling ball, whether it's a polished finish or sanded finish, whatever it is, it then goes to our next step, which is the engraving section. So this is the lineup here. You can see all these blue boxes right here all have these needles. This controls exactly what gets engraved on the outside surface of the bowling ball. So if you look right here, you can actually see, Lucas, we've got a bowling ball you may be familiar with. It's one of our longest standing bowling balls we've had in the marketplace. It's called the High Road. The ball's been just celebrated its 11th anniversary, 11th birthday, I should, I should say, anniversary for us, birthday for the ball. And, uh, and it's been one of our most popular balls of all time. And we're actually engraving some of them right here. So you, you came at a good time. So, we're, so in this step, we are uh, engraving the, the lo Storm logo, the ball branded logo. That's right. The uh, serial number. Serial right? number gets engraved here at this time as well. Yep, USB-C approved marking, made in the USA. That gets engraved here, and it all happens right in this spot. Or if we have a preferred spin axis, some of our asymmetrical balls, like we were talking about before, that marking as well would be engraved at this time. Then it comes around here to the area where they actually take and use that filler color. And you can see right now, she's actually wiping and filling that paint in on all those logos. So you, so you can actually see them on the exterior of the bowling ball. If we didn't do that, you wouldn't know what ball you had. The pro shop would just be a sea of, what is this? And what, what kind of material is that? Is that like a paint or is that, what is that, like a filler? Yeah, they actually have, it's a, it's a filler type, of, kind of a proprietary type of material, but what we do is we add different dyes to it, so it makes a different color. So that's why you'll see some of them that actually have a yellow tone or an orange tone or maybe even like a lime green tone to it. And these balls, the, the engravings are, are relatively deep, right? Because it takes a, law, a lot of resurfacing of a bowling ball to get those off of there, right? It does, yeah. And they're actually made that way intentionally because we do know that bowlers are going to want to, you know, periodically sand, refinish, resurface their bowling ball. And if they resurface it, they're not going to want all the logos to just disappear from that ball. So, so we actually make them deep enough so we can actually get that in the bowling ball. So you might have noticed after we fill in all those logos, Lucas, there still is a little bit of a residue of that material on the surface of the ball. So it still has another couple stages to go through to get it ready for the consumer. So one of the first stages it goes to next is you'll see Boyd in the corner there. Boyd's been here for a long time, does an awesome job for us. And he actually cleans a lot of that surface of the bowling ball to give it a more professional appearance. And then it goes to the one of the final stages, which is actually determining what the top weight is in that bowling ball. We also measure the pin distance, and we get that entered in the computer. So it's getting one step closer to the final process. All right, Lucas, well, this is the final step right here. You can actually see we're opening up some empty ball boxes. We're putting the balls in the bags, getting the ball stickers for the appropriate ball. And then it comes right through the wall here. And then this is our final boxing area. And what we'll do is we'll actually organize them by model and by weight. You can see right here by looking at all these high roads we have, these are all 14 pound high roads. So I say for example here, I was telling you about some of that information. We'll actually put the top weight and the pin distance and then the gross weight is all right here on the label. It also even includes exactly what that serial number is. All right here. You want to take a look? Sure, let's see what the finished product. There you have it. We've gone from the very genesis of a bowling ball to taking you through the whole process. Now they're in boxes. They're going to get packed into four ball boxes, I would assume, and shipped off to your local pro shops and distributors to get in your hands back at home.